Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week, we check out some of those new Physique saddles. We have some 3D printed smart shifters and some tie-dye titanium. Tie-dye titanium, that's a word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, we also chat a bit about linkage forks and there's some cool stuff from you guys, of course. All right, now straight into news. Um, first thing, actually, this week, it's not really that much news. It's not a new product as such, but I did see a picture, you might have seen it as well, on uh, Bergtech's Instagram page, in fact, this is the picture, um, of their Enduro Mark II stem, which you can get a little faceplate for it, it's got the GoPro mount on it, but they had an exposure light mounted on it. Yeah. And I was like, why have we not seen this before? Such a good idea. Yeah, and I was like, you know, looking in the comments, I was like, where did the bracket come from? And they actually said it was made by someone, but on the Exposure website, you can actually get a bracket oh, to fit on a GoPro yeah. fitting anyway. Why is this not more common? Yeah, it amazes me that more either lights don't share GoPro fittings or vice versa, if you see what I mean. Yeah. You know, in road bikes, it's really common to see Garmin mounts and all that sort of paraphernalia come as stock. They give you loads of options. Yeah. And sometimes our cluttered cockpits, I think, are a device of our own making, you know? We can definitely streamline them a bit. Yeah, for sure. And, there's all, you know, you've got the problems as well with 35mm bars and 318s and all the other different stuff. Yeah. As you found out recently when I let you a light and it was the wrong size clamp. <laughs> it's all just a bit of a bodge, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw this one over to them, basically, because I think it's really cool that they're making products like this, and even better, actually, the exposure even makes that little mount, so you can use it with other... Like, I know there's various different aluminium GoPro brackets you can get. So, pretty cool bit of kit, I think. And speaking on the theme of tidy cockpits, Zerbal Bike, who are this kind of really, how would you describe them? Quite like a... A Swiss techie tech yeah. company. But they basically make twist rings that can be programmed either wirelessly or wired via DI2. Yes. To function, you know, to carry the shifting function of your gears, mm. which is super neat. The Bluetooth can also be dulled to a camera or operate your phone. So clean looking, so tech. And what's really cool is they've got an open license for 3D printing. Yeah, that is really smart actually. So you can just, you can, the actual, um, the ring, which is the interface for your thumb, can be changed however you see fit, which I think is super cool. Yeah, and by having that, what is it they call them, uh, STL files, mm -hmm. um, that's what Tom Wheeler was using for his stuff. I think it's really cool that you could print in any color plastic that you yeah. wanted to at home, so you can color coordinate that specific part to your bike. But can you see the industry sort of going this way? You know, sometimes it seems crazy to me if, say, a part to be designed in Germany, mm -hmm. manufactured in, say, the Far East, then posted back <laughs> to, you know, I'll to see Germany, you, with you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When actually, if 3D printers were perhaps more commonplace, you could just buy the design, hey presto. So buying a license almost. Buying the license, you, yeah. And you actually just print it from there. That's a really good idea. But it could kind of shake up the industry a bit, and I wonder mm. if it would affect the power balance between the customers and the manufacturers. I think it would certainly enable a lot of the smaller brands to have a bigger footprint mm. straight away. It would definitely empower those, yeah, yeah. those home tinkerers. Mm. Um, I don't know if you noticed as well, um, they also shared one on their Instagram page. It looks the same as all these ones in the pictures, but it says it's an access mm. compatible one, which is pretty smart. So a fully wireless option as well. And I like the fact that it just looks, I don't know, I think sometimes, although actually the access to radio, I, it would be very unfair to call it clunky by any regard. I've never seen a, direct, uh, a shifter so streamlined as this. Mm, to yeah. have it just on a collar yeah. seems super cool. Yeah, and just to be able to like tap it with your knuckle versus your yeah. thumb, so that's nice. amazing. Uh, yeah, very cool stuff. Um, next up in news, we've got these new Physique saddles. So there's two different models here available. There's one a bit more focused on uh, all mountain trail riding and one a bit more focused around the downhill side of things. Um, on the underneath this, I don't know if you noticed, know, they've got these um, almost like the wings can flex. Mm -hmm. So basically it's supposed to be more comfortable on the inside of your thighs when you're smashing down hills, really. Because I have to admit, I think it was the last season when perhaps they started sponsoring the Santa Cruz Syndicate. Yeah. I did think it was quite a strange matchup. Yeah, because they didn't really have a product. They didn't really have a product, yeah. 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 And it was just like, you know, they're such big players in the road market. They're coming into mountain biking. We had those shoes, which if you haven't checked out, we did an unboxing of last week. But speaking to them, I said, you know, what, what are your designs in this? And they mm. said, maybe one day a flat pedal shoe isn't completely out of the question. That'd be very cool and for them. And it would be really, really it cool. Would. So maybe the syndicate guys are having an input in that regard as well. Yeah, um, just a few other cool things as well to go along that school of thought. You're saying about the syndicate riding them. Uh, obviously that's a bit more biased for downhill bikes. So it's 30 mil width. Um, the rail itself is actually single piece, which is a nice design. See, it's quite often just two prongs that go into the bodywork of the saddle. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you get breakages. 
So by having that as a solid piece, that's got to be a pretty strong piece of kit. It looks quite a stout. It quite does. Short. Yeah, and a very flat, sort of wide nose on there as well. But that's becoming, I think, kind of increasingly common. You see the Specialized Power, yeah. which is actually what a lot of people choose to run, whether they're sponsored by Specialized or not, like increasingly commonly yeah. on the pro circuit. Super cool looking saddle. And I remember, you know, when I first started riding, when perhaps our gearing was, wasn't so low, I always wanted a long saddle to, to get keep, right on the front. To get weight right on the front. Yeah. But you don't really need it so much. You're not yeah. really wheeling a bike on the climbs. And... Yeah, well, I guess angles have got better as well. Yes, true. Since then, you know, we're getting steeper and steeper to get that weight further forward. So why do you need a massive saddle? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously there's the, the trail focus version. So that's 145 mm spaced, a bit better for all day comfort. Still got those same wings on the back and the single piece rail design. Uh, but again, a very sort of forgiving wide flat front on there. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice shape. Speaking of wings, Cane Creek brought out the <gasps> E-wings, which is quite a nice little flirt, if I may say to myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice joint, Some I like it. Unbelievably good looking cranks. Tie-dye cranks. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? it super, looks... super limited, aren't they, these things? I mean, I'm not surprised they're limited. They cost 1,100 bucks each. Ah, oh, absolutely worth it. To have yeah. a pair of cranks that look like that. 10 year warranty. 10 year cranks. 10 year Ooh. warranty and a pair of cranks. <laughs> Bonkers. Yeah. Like, that doesn't exist anywhere. Totally, and they do look just fantastic, mm. and they use that Hellbender bottom bracket, which I believe yeah. you got up close and personal with at your, up close and personal with at Eurobike. Yeah, I was um, really impressed actually by the Cane Creek guys, the way that they talked about it. So it's an SKF matrix bearing on the inside of that, which we have discussed before. But the fact that they're championing it by putting it in their own bottom bracket, so they're aware of how cool the technology is, but the fact that they're so open in telling everyone this bearing is like is already out there, yeah. you can get this, but we're using it first. Yeah. I think that's great. I think it's super cool. And SKF seem to be coming, they're doing a bit more of that now. Their aftermarket yeah. seals mm -hmm. are becoming kind of more common, seeing that teal colour. And yeah. I think it's super cool to see a big bearing player diversify. I agree, yeah, and I think we need to get older some. Yeah, <laughs> big time. There's a lot we can do with them. Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave, which of course means we get to look at where you store your bikes. Could be a garden shed, could be under the stairs, could be under the bed, uh, could be anywhere really. So if you've got a cool bike cave, take some photos of it, send it in to us. The link is right there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, kicking off this week is Skippy's Bike Cave. So this is from John in uh, Pennines, West Yorkshire. Uh, this was originally a garage, then converted to a bar until the kids came along. Now it's converted to a bike cave. Right. Well, it looks like you've had a lot of fun yeah, in there totally over the years. Making good use of it. Uh, Good to see you've got uh, Henry Quinney's Canyon Strive Everest attempt bike check on the screen Ooh. as well. So you're watching the channel. Oh, there it is. There's a bar. Oh my God. What's wrong with That's that? That's super cool. That's great. <laughs> I think you've messed it up there. No. <laughs> Just joking. We've no. got to tread carefully here. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, it looks like a proper bar, actually. He's clearly got uh, some, you know, penchant for interior design. He's yeah. ticking all the boxes. Yeah, looking that. good. And now, obviously, it looks much better, actually. I love that little sink. Is that like from a uh, caravan or something like that? Um, I was looking for a smaller sink actually for my workshop, mm -hmm. so I've got a massive one in there, it's a bit of a pain. Do you have a connected to the water mains or? Uh, I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen it before, people just have a tube running into a disposable oil bottle for That's forks. a good idea. It's just a self-draining pan. I kind of wanted a small one like this and then have some sort of parts washer. Yes. But where some of the ones you get, the more environmentally friendly ones are huge. I've yeah, got room for that. Yeah. I need to formulate some kind of small <laughs> system. We'll come back to that another day. Yeah. But uh, yeah, looking cool. What's uh, that? Is that a treadmill? Uh, yeah, it looks like a treadmill, yeah. Uh, folded nice. up out the way nicely. Good. Yeah, totally. Good on that. And a little uh, Henry the Hoover as well. Oh. You're a busy man. Yeah, totally. I get around. <laughs> um, or oh, a bench mounted um, work stand, too. I quite like those. I've kind of fancied the idea of doing it myself because my tool, my tool chest is off to the side. I could probably get away with that. Mm -hmm. Save myself some floor space. I really like it for when you've got forks out the bike. Oh, yeah. So Just, good for working forks. Yeah, totally. But yeah, looking good. And on one. Oh, someone from up north with an on one. Never would have thought that. <laughs> Many uh, bikes. <laughs> uh, great bikes. Yeah, super cool. Looking good, mate. Looking good. All right, next up is from Daniel in Bedfordshire. Kitted out my old shed with all the stuff needed to service my bike. Latest upgrade is converted to tubeless. And his caption is, not just your Amfrid shed. Yep, nice and simple. That's what we like to see. WD-40 up on the back there, your tool board, a little light on the shelf in the back as well. Um, Lawn mode just cast aside, rightfully so, to make room for the bike. <laughs> You need another shed, really, for your garden stuff, don't you? You don't want to have all that clogging up your bike, shed, <laughs> bike cave. But uh, looking good, Daniel. Uh, next up, we've got one from Mike in New York. Nice. Uh, dabbling in cross-country and mostly recreational trail riding with a bit of urban exploring whenever wheels, wherever my wheels take me. Uh, what's that? Is that a giant? 
Yeah, yes, giant. Trance and then Talon, I believe, which yeah, is... You're the resident giant the, expert. The pride, the pride of Queenstown bike rentals, yeah. the giant Talon. Yeah. Those things are just incredible. Mike's hard lemonade, whatever that is. I think... Uh, Alcoholic lemonade? Yeah, I was going to say, it's <laughs> just lemonade with vodka. <laughs> wow, check this place out. So this one's from Jeremy. Doesn't say his location, just says my garage is finally getting there. Uh, epoxied the floor, thrown some paint on the walls nice. until I get a chance to line them with OSB and fit some decent lighting. One day it will be complete. That's a good, a good place to spot, start Fucking with. Look at the space in there. Super nice. There we go, there we are on his laptop there as well. That's pretty cool. Oh, nice. And I'll see you being down at home base to get one of those massive tool uh, chests. I feel like we're, tool chests. We're, we're in perilous danger of falling into a Russian doll situation. <laughs> because if the next one takes a video of us watching that video Ooh, on that video. That'd be weird. Then it will just, when will it stop? We should see, maybe it's like a game of tennis. We're throwing it to the viewers. Next time you take pictures of your bike cave, see if you can get this tech show showing that tech show. <laughs> and we'll it's just like, keep it going. Have you been up in the lift in this building at all? No. In the lift, it's, one of, it's one of those mirrored lifts. Yeah. And uh, Mark was here the other day, took a picture of a picture, it does a thing which just goes <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's good space. Quite Ooh, envious of that. Nice set. Yeti uh, posted up there. Yeah, nice set of drawers as well. Yeah, both sets. Yeah. Looking good, plenty of space. There he is, nice. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I've oh, had to start laughing, oh. I'd be in danger of recreating the photo exactly. <laughs> Those things are super useful. It's obviously does some work on a car, looking at the stuff there. Um, just a little mechanic still, but the parts tray on the underneath. So you can zip around and just have your stuff with you. Oh, nice. They're actually uh, really good. I'd probably just take that down the shops. <laughs> just just Tesco all day long. Just Supermarket sweet, baby. I could do one at my desk, just put my lunch in it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, looking good. Thank you, everyone, for sending those in. Um, keep them coming. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. This is where we look back at where all the cool tech came from. Uh, if you've got any old tech, if you've got any old mountain bikes, or even some shots of you perhaps dressed quite awkwardly in 90s mountain bike era, send them in to <laughs> yes. us. Um, anything goes. Uh, alternatively, if there's anything you want to know about, perhaps where it came from and how we've got there, uh, fire away, add them in the comments underneath this, use the hashtag rewind, or send them in to our uploader at the link at the bottom of the screen. Um, first up this week is from Josh. Um, he says, working in a small bike shop, and this baby came around for a complete overhaul, so nice. classic specialised FSR. Actually, the league's ahead of its time. It's just got um, one of those Manitou expert forks on it. So it's a four inch travel fork, but it's a mm. twin crown. Yeah. But not a downer fork. Yeah, you know, the era when the stems were long, but the travel was short. Yes, you know? 100%. And similarly enough, that Dahon in the background, I'd say uses the same, same, same design principles. Would you, <laughs> would you not think? Well, I think the less we say about that. <laughs> I <laughs> think the better. No, I'm, I'm just playing. It's, it's a great looking bike. But it's kind of cool that Specialized is still using the FSR yeah. system, the classic four bar link. But it's, um, they helped develop it. And, and after their, I think it was 2011 when their patent expired, Yeah. everyone was like, oh, uh, we're going in. That, that FSR thing's pretty cool yeah. after years of telling us otherwise. No, super cool. All right, next up is from Simon, and this one is a Cannondale Super V Raven. <laughs> um, I mean, what a, what a piece of work this mm -hmm. is. Uh, it's obviously got road tyres on there, but it looks fairly original. Coda cranks on there. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's got, Mag well, I thought I was going to say I had Magura brakes for a second, but then I looked at the, uh, it's got weird V brakes on there. Uh, maybe Super V V brakes uh, or something like that. I, but uh, head shock system. I really like these. the way the saddle on the seat post. Yeah. Now you know more about, well, infinitely more about this era than I do. Yeah. Could you then change the size of your seat post with that system? Was that what it was there for? Or was it just a double um, clamp for security? I have no idea. I mean, to be fair, Cannondale, one of those brands, you could say this sentence for them. I have no idea why Cannondale. <laughs> yeah. Because they've done it a lot. Yeah, yeah, like totally. Lefty and all sorts of yeah. random stuff. But that's also, I think, one of the reasons I love Cannondale as a brand and a lot of people um, buy into Cannondale because they're a bit obscure. They develop things and if it doesn't go the way they want, they just go on a tangent and go mm -hmm. somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, that. You know, they're, they're a walking sort of mystery, you know, a bike that, well, they have one-legged forks, but then two shocks and a bike. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, yeah. they play by their own rules. I'm sure that they, like in a business meeting somewhere, they're like, hey guys, so, you know we had that fork, like one leg. <laughs> How many can we get on a bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they do that sort of thing. Something but... you were telling me that was super cool about that latest um, version of the Lefty. Yeah. Is for a year, you were saying they were running it with a fake. That's right, yeah, the Ocho, the single crown one. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, team racers like um, Henry Cavazzini and uh, Manny and all the others, they're actually running it with a fake upper mm. on it. I guess like a 3D printed plastic yep. upper crown. 
And because you'd have a number plate on there when you're racing, at a glance, no one would notice yeah. that it was the brand new fork. So cool. So it was already race proven before Proper people prototyping. found out it exists. I yeah. love Canada for doing that stuff. Uh, next up, this one is awesome. So Neil used to have one of these. This is a Schwinn four banger. Um, so the back end of this is basically a parallelogram. If I can get to it, all these pictures. Oh, look at those haze brake levers. Looked amazing, but were terrible. Um, <laughs> HFX. There we go. Look at the back end on that. These things were so active, it was insane. Yeah. Full floating back end on there. The original trunnion mount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could dial in your geometry with it. Big carbon swing arm on there. Amazing looking bikes for the time, really by all accounts, and super, super active. Um, I seem to remember them feeling quite linear though. Um, it felt like I had a lot more travel, mm -hmm. but I think you probably quite like it because you like a bit more yeah, of a linear always, feel yeah. to a bike. Yeah. I think it, it felt quite deep in the travel a lot of the time. Um, ultra popular in the downhill versions, which were the straight eights and the straight sixes, but the four banger is quite rare actually. Oh, is it? You don't see too many of them around. It's certainly an interesting looking bike, yeah. that's for sure. And haze brakes as well when they were. You know, really kind of, I suppose, pride in place. Yeah, there. I mean, I was a bit mean about them. They were compared to what was around at the time. They're actually, by all accounts, really good. Yeah. Um, but you just have to bleed them all the time, I seem to remember, those early mags. But um, those new, I think they have the Dominion breakout now. Yeah, but you actually, bleed them for two ways as well. Oh, can you? Yeah. They also have that grub screw to fine tune. Yeah, yeah which, really which well is why no one else done that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think where they are now is a really good place. Mm. Um, but it's funny, you know, different manufacturers, they go up and down over the years, they bring yeah. out some great products, they bring out some okay products. And yes, it all swings around the back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the last one, this one pleases me, this is from Martin in Cleveland, and he was looking for some bike bits and he found his old video collection. So at the top there, you got Dirt, the classic with JMC. Underneath it, Chain Spotting, which on the cover, you got Rob Warner, Will Longdon, Steve Pete, Martin Hawes, and Martin Ashton. Um, Steve Pete in the bottom one of them mud cows and burning calves. Uh, which at the time when they came out, it was basically just loads of crazy Aussies, the great Northern Hill tribe, just with like holes in their arms and legs and stitching themselves up, <laughs> pretty much. Um, absolute madness. Yeah. But I've got fond memories of watching all those early videos on VHS with my mates. Yeah, good times. Good to see that stuff. Thanks for sending them in. Now, the time of the show for Top Mods. This is the place where we can showcase your ingenious solutions that you come up with at home. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I've got a pretty good idea, get in the link below, take some photos, let us know what it's all about. And this is actually pretty cool. This is a return for a chap called Mick Williams, who a little while ago sent him what he calls a bike box roller, which, I mean, amount of, I wonder how many thousands of miles I've traveled with bike boxes. I've done the same but, thing. Oh, they're a time. nightmare. But this is ingenious. It is absolutely fantastic and is an easy way. The worst thing is when you've got a long walk and you basically drag a hole. Oh, God, yeah, and You can yeah. always like, worry about the fork. So you've got to preserve it as much as you can. Yeah, totally. So is that like a skate wheel or something on the back? It looked like I really good so. wheels, didn't they? And if my friend, I've got a friend who was talking about doing this for a while with a skateboard. Yeah. And he never did. And the early bird catches the worm, you know what I mean? Well, Mike's gone and done it. He's gone and done it and <laughs> it looks fantastic. And if you're interested in this, if you're somebody that does travel with a bike box a lot, I think you should get involved, hit them up. I completely agree because bike boxes, let's face it, they're good for the environment to reuse them. They're made of cardboard anyway. Mm -hmm. They're dirt cheap, which means if you're about to go on a gap year and go to Whistler or wherever you want to go, um, you just go to a local bike shop and quite often they have to pay to recycle. So you might be lucky to get one for free yeah. or for a minimal cost, a pack of beer or whatever for the mechanic and you can walk away with one of these. Yeah, and they are. your bike in it. And also they're very, very light. That's yeah. one thing that is good. Yes, yeah, so you can overload them with all the key you need. Yeah, totally. Yeah. One time, between two of us, we took 30 boxes to one St. Anne. 30? 30. Oh, man. Because you, you, you have to shuttle it because you can't leave anything at the airport. Here's, here's a question for you, actually, talking terrible. about this. I'd, in fact, no, it's a question. It's a discussion for another day, maybe mm -hmm. an our special. We'll do one on traveling with bikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have reservations about traveling with their own bike, and yes, but it might be too much to hire at the other end. Do you risk taking a cardboard box? Yeah. Admittedly, I wouldn't anymore. But I've done it before many a time mm -hmm. and it's okay and it's mostly been all right. I have been a devout cardboard box user until I got a douchebag. Yeah. And I was just like, this is what I've been it's missing actually out a proper on. bag. Oh yeah, my yeah. God. It's like I've been living in the wilderness for all these years, <laughs> you know, and just like pitying other cyclists yeah. when they get their Evox bike bags off, whatever. Oh. And they look at you and you're there like with a soggy cardboard box, like, this is who I am. <laughs> I see. I've never had one damaged, and I think I fluked it. But I'm, I know plenty of mates who've had bikes come out and have been proper chuckle brother airlines, and <laughs> yes. had, you know, a bike come out, pedals hanging out of the box and stuff, and like, yeah. oh, I feel for you. 
but a nice full story. So thanks for following that up with us, Mick. That's super mm. cool. And check out his website. We'll put a link in the bottom should you want to spruce up your bike box experience. Yeah, and also just on, on the basis of this, if you've got any questions about traveling with your bikes, could be putting them in the car, on a bike rack, going by plane, anything like that with traveling, uh, let us know in the comments underneath to ask GMVN Tech and we'll we'll chuck a special together all yeah. about traveling. Sounds good. And love to hear some of Henry's stories about travels and World Cup stuff, but I don't know if, bike boxes. I don't know if I want to relive them. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to know a bit more about this stuff. Just kind of forget how much gear that you guys must yeah. have been taking. It must be nuts. Terrible. <laughs> okay, now time for Tech of the Week. And I thought I'd pick up on something a bit conversational, actually, because uh, uh, you might have seen floating around on the, on the, on the web a few linkage-based suspension forks at the moment. And yeah. um, they're raising a lot of questions. They're getting a lot of hate, a lot of love, a lot of... Um, neutral feedback actually, a lot of people sitting on the fence, rightly so if you've not ridden one as such. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they're kind of interesting. They're like, certainly interesting. I would be curious to try, I've never ridden one. Yep. I'd be curious to try one and I would go into it, you know, with an open mind. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think that's super important. I can't say that to look at them, it inspires me to ride. Yeah, there's some... You know, some of them have got faces for radio. I yeah, so because you've been you've been spending a bit of time on them this weekend. Yeah, I have. Um, I think I need a few more rides before I'm willing to sort mm -hmm. of talk about them too much. But there's there's a few things that they. I've been having a quick go on the trust ones. A mm. few things that they do that, that almost doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, like the square hit thing. Yeah, like, they're gone completely. <laughs> they don't square hits don't but, exist because they've got such a rearward axle path. Imagine coupling that with a high linkage rearward, and you're frame would just, you know what I mean, the wheels would just we'll like, both go backwards. Just go, go backwards <laughs> and leave them behind. But sure. you've got um, motion ride as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of a confusing name. Yeah, and that's that's almost like the Praying Mantis style one. It's crazy looking. Yeah, thing, it, it yeah. is crazy. But also it's been going around, you know, that nuke proof reactor, that bike check. Yeah, it's deep been from done the before, archive, isn't it? Has been done before. There was that crazy looking white bike. Um, you know, you, we've got loads written down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Ampef one from yeah. way back in the day with a tiny little linkage. Mm -hmm. um, but I think all of these earlier linkage forks, they all had issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's so interesting to see that they're kind of making a bit of a return. So you think that there's technically more of them. There's pivots on them, which are going to mm -hmm. weigh a bit. Uh, pivots technically could wear out as well, could be a problem. True. Um, and I think no one managed to get it right. But I think it's really cool that people are bothering to revisit because what we've learned over all these years I think we could be seeing something quite special coming from suspension manufacturers. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, just, just for the uninitiated, why would I want to run a linkage fork? Why would you not want to? But do you know what I mean? is, it, is it a particular characteristic they can offer? Um, well, if you think that um, a linkage controls where mm -hmm. your suspension goes, your axle path, everything, it's mm -hmm. just exactly the same on the front. Um, I mean, my, my best example of that would be, for example, on a Fox 36, you might have to run quite a lot of low speed compression on there to hold your fork up if you're riding rough chattery trails, yeah. stuff like that. And a linkage fork, basically some of them will have an anti-dive part of them. So right, they won't okay, be diving, yes. so you could technically run less low rebound. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be way more open, way more comfortable, way more grip, mm -hmm. but you still retain your head angle on that. Yeah, I was going to say. So that you... could be a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, then of course there's a geometry thing, where your geometry changes the whole time. Um, this is a minefield of conversation. Um, maybe we should start a conversation down there. I think see so. See where people are going. Uh, don't be negative though. Don't you know? Don't just have a go at these things for how they look, because they certainly do look bizarre. I want to know what people actually think about linkage forks and what the potential could be for off-road use. Let us know down there. And that is it from the GMBN Tech Show for another week. Thank you very much for watching. Now, if you want to stick with the channel, you can check out Laurie Greenland's absolutely spectacular looking Mondraker. We did I a bike check of that that came out on Saturday. Mm. It's worth checking out. It's just amazing. Yeah, and for something else a bit different for us, check out Henry's track walk with Eddie Masters down here. Pretty cool, actually, because it's not just looking at the track, it's looking at what the bike goes through, actually, as you're riding something as rough as that. I think mean, it's really cool. Check it out. Um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and hit the bell for notifications. Cheers, guys. Cheers.